Halo Combat Evolved is a first-person shooter developed by Bungie for the Xbox in 2001, and it was eventually ported to Microsoft Windows. It's often heralded as being one of the greatest shooting games of all time. I've even heard it called a masterpiece in certain circles, and it's arguably one of the best games for the Xbox console. It's a pretty damn good shooting game to be sure, but is it a masterpiece? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Let's just find out, shall we? I should point out that for this review, I'm gonna be focusing on the single player campaign, not the multiplayer. I know there's a lot of people out there who spent a lot of time playing this game online when it was released, but I'm not one of them. There's other reviewers out there who can talk about it in much greater detail than I ever could. So anyway, the plot for the game goes that at some point in the future, mankind has colonized countless planets throughout the galaxy and soon comes into contact with an asshole alien race known as the Covenant, who are dead keen on discovering the location of Earth. The player controls the Master Chief, voiced by Stephen Downs, who is a genetically modified super soldier referred to as a Spartan. Master Chief is accompanied by Cortana, voiced by the Troy Baker of female voice actresses, Jen Taylor. Cortana is a sort of blubbermouth AI that lives inside his helmet and barks out orders and objectives to keep you on your merry way. Now the term Halo refers to a large ring-like structure featured in the game's storyline, and there's a series of these across the galaxy that, apparently when activated, have the power to destroy all life in the universe. The entire campaign takes place on one of those halos and you're rushing to stop the Covenant from activating it, killing every single one of them that gets in your way. Later in the campaign you also come across an enemy called the Flood, which is sort of a mutant alien race that destroys everything it comes across. These guys kind of become the real threat towards the end of the storyline, though you will still be taking down Covenant forces all the same. Quite humorously, the Covenant and Flood will also attack each other on sight, which can also be used to the player's advantage. Aside from that, you're also aided by Marines who get dropped in by military transports or who you just run into in certain areas. And these guys often follow you around, hopping into vehicles with you and helping out in gunfights. They're surprisingly good at holding their own and some of their dialogue is really funny to listen to. I like how they often lament whenever you kill more bad guys than they do. Overall, the story isn't that groundbreaking, honestly, but it's some of the gameplay elements which were really innovative and original for the time. I guess the biggest sort of innovation that Halo brought to the table was the shield system, replacing a more conventional health bar. Now, the way this worked was that you had a shield protecting you, which when drained from damage would start sapping away your remaining health points. Then you had to avoid taking damage for a short while to let it recharge, essentially just like regenerating health in one shooter. When you only had one hit point left, you were treated to the migraine-inducing sound of a thumping heartbeat until you found a medkit and restored your hit points to full. It was a nice way of keeping the combat fast-paced, whilst also giving the player somewhat of a limitation on how stupid or careless they could be with enemy encounters. Another thing that Halo featured, which once again has become something of a genre standard, is the player only being able to carry two weapons at any one time. These weapons are divided between either Marine or Covenant technology, Marine weapons are things like rocket launchers, assault rifles, shotguns, etc. Whilst the Covenant weapons are expectedly more energy based type weapons. The shotgun and pistol in particular are some of the most useful weapons in the game. The shotgun can kill most enemies in one or two hits and the pistol is accurate and highly damaging. But I wouldn't say any of the weapons in general are ever really that useless. I mean, most of them serve a purpose and each work better or worse in certain scenarios. The Chief also has two grenade types he can throw with the click of a button, a standard fragmentation grenade and a plasma grenade, which attaches itself to enemies if you aim it properly. Lastly, to help you navigate some of the game's more larger terrain, you're given several vehicles to assist you, with the most iconic being the Warthog. This is something of a fan favourite amongst Halo fans and it still drives and handles really well, with the right amount of oversteer when you turn corners giving it a really good sense of weight. Other vehicles include a Banshee, which is a Covenant ship you can fly about leaving a cool looking vapour trail behind you, and also a Scorpion tank with a devastating missile launcher and machine gun combo. Halo's soundtrack is also hard to pigeonhole into one genre. Composed by Martin O'Donnell and Michael Salvatore, it's more of an underscore than anything else, but there are certain moments when it picks up in intensity, and for the most part, it sounds good to listen to. Okay, so look, I think I've been down on my knees long enough, so let's talk about what I do not like about this game. Graphically, you can't really mock a game that's over a decade old. For what it is, it looks pretty good. The animations in particular are really impressive, and a lot of the particle effects for weapons and explosions look great. The issue is the way that the levels are often laid out. What does that mean, you ask? Well, let me break it down. 
Admittedly, the level design is mostly great. I mean, it's nice and open, giving you many different ways to tackle your objectives, but then there's the frequent interior areas with copy-pasted layouts over and over, where it starts to feel like you've just been walking in circles as you see a similar looking corridor for the 50th time. Quite often after you've spent a good 10 or 15 minutes trotting through one of them, you're then given the objective to escape or extract, which means you basically just have to go all the way back to where you started. Now this kind of thing is annoying for two main reasons. Number one, because it's just lazy design, and number two, because it makes navigation an absolute chore. It becomes impossible to tell which room is which when they're all just copy pasted one after the other. There's no real landmarks or structures that you can use to get your bearings and it can just be an absolute maze crawl. There is a chapter where you will traverse the same two or three looking corridors for 30 or so minutes. And a couple of the later chapters in the game after that are literally just earlier chapters reused forcing you to move through them in the opposite direction as you retreat. Like I said, it's just lazy. Certain exterior areas lack any form of cover for the player, leaving you as a huge target for enemies in vehicles, who will all too happily just run right into you for an instant kill. And on that note, let's talk about the enemy types. Now, in all fairness, these are very well designed, and I like how they've all got their own individual attack styles and patterns. But on the other hand, they're also extremely annoying, and they never sit still. The flood enemies seem to come out of nowhere half the time and they're in absolute abundance. They kind of magically lock onto you for melee attacks and often also spawn behind you in huge numbers because, you know, that's how you make a game difficult. Covenant enemies are equally irritating. They bounce all over the place like they're hopped up on energy drinks. I mean, I know this was kind of the point and I mean, the AI is really dynamic in the way that it reacts to your playstyle, but it just becomes so tedious when enemies are constantly bunny hopping all over the place. Killing them just becomes something of a chore. Later in the game, there's a couple of environments where everyone is firing at you from several hundred meters away, hitting dead on target every time. You're up against assholes with rocket launchers that can kill you in one hit, tanks, banshees, and ground units who fire at you with near aimbot precision. Now look, these aren't the kind of things that outright ruin the game, but they can just be irritating, especially if you're trying to complete the game on higher difficulties, which, let's be honest, you really should be. For everything Halo does wrong though, it does something equally right. I mean, for a console shooting game, considering the limitations of the Xbox and all that, this is downright black magic in terms of what has been achieved. The sheer size of some of the levels and all the various technology with the physics and other elements that have been thrown into such a limited console is amazing. I love how the little grunt enemies will scream and run away and fight when you kill the commander, for instance, or the way the other Marines throw their hands up and, you know, yippee when you take the Warthog off a jump. But the cheapness of certain enemies combined with the outright lazy repetition of certain environments really lets the game down. A lot of people kind of romanticize older games like this, you know, because they associate a certain memory or feeling with playing it. I'm guilty of that myself for certain games. But on the whole, I'd say Halo really is one of those games that you can look back on and still understand what made it so popular and well received all those years ago. In the next video, I'll be taking a look at the second game, Halo 2, and we'll see how it has held up over the years as well.